Church, how in heaven are you? Hallelujah. Did you come with an excitement and an expectation of what God longs to do in your life tonight? Hallelujah. I know I'm expecting great things in Jesus' awesome, awesome name. Give someone a high five, an elbow bump, a fist bump, a hug. Share the love of Christ with family. We love you so much, church.
Come on, it's rewriting. It's rewriting my history. Such good news tonight. It covers me with destiny. Come on, it's making, it's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ is rewriting my history. Yes. It covers me with destiny. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ is rewriting my history. It covers, it covers, it covers me with destiny. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ is real.
stories that have proved your faithfulness and i've seen miracles my mind can comprehend there is beauty in what i can't understand jesus it's you jesus it's you
we were asked time and time and time again when that song first came out to play it. I don't know if I've ever said this or not, but yeah, it's a great song. There's so many great songs, but you get a song like that that just declares just such goodness. And of course it's a hit, it's all of those things. It's, it's just awesome, it's an awesome song. But I refuse to play it until I lived it. And I can say as a church, we now live that. We've seen cancer disappear. We've seen broken bodies healed. We've seen real life resurrections. We've seen prodigals return. not because we beg, not because we work hard enough, not because we deserve it, not because we can bring all these gifts and talents to the table, but he simply does what he does because he's love. For God so loved the world, not that we were lovely, we were so broken, we were so fallen, we're so far from our original design, but God so loved, why? Because he's loved, God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. And in that love is so that we can be brought back to the Father so that we can now actually have a way to come to the Father. That's all he wants, his relationship, his fellowship, to be in union with one another the design that's always been there from the beginning, which selfishness and sin got in the way of it and now created a gap and created a divide that no man could ever come to the Father because there was no way. But now Jesus came to show the love of the Father and provide a way and to now bridge that gap, which is the cross, his arms stretched out so that he could be the way, the truth, and the life. And now, through his goodness, through Father's love, through Father's grace, he provided the way through Jesus to a people that were so unworthy and so unrighteous he said, watch what I'm going to do. Why? Because I love you so much. I am going. It's going to be the greatest exchange that we have ever seen. There is some great exchanges that happen even in the Bible. In the Bible alone, a lot of great things where people give, where people sow, where people do. There's, there's a great exchange. But man, to know that God so loved that he exchanged our filthy rags for his righteousness, something that we never deserve, that we could never earn, but man, he so freely gave it. All we have to do is just freely receive it tonight. You might be saying, well, I'm just so unlovely, I'm so unlovable, and that's why God so loved you that he gave. just unlovable. I'm not lovely exactly. That's why you need to be found in the one who is. That's why you need to be covered by his goodness and his grace and the loving arms of the Father because it's nothing that we could ever do on our own. We can never become lovely on our own. We can never become good enough. We can never become somebody who is lovable on our own. But that's
that's okay. Because God so loved. Not that we just loved God hard enough that he gave. God so loved that he gave. I don't know what you're carrying tonight, but I just, we're gonna enter into a time of communion and just a perfect opportunity. But if you don't have elements, just kindly slip them up, your hand up and someone will be around to get you what you need. Here's my thing. I don't know what you came in carrying today, but I know what you can leave at the table. praying before service. I just, I really felt this in Jeremiah. I've actually kind of been preaching the, the second part of this. And God just really laid the first part of this in Jeremiah 17. And starting in verse five, it says, thus says the Lord, curses the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Get that, curses the man who trusts in man. How many times, I'm not talking as somebody who's unredeemed and not born again. But how many times as a born again believer have I trusted in man by trusting in myself? I've trusted in man by trusting this world system. I've trusted in man by putting hope and faith and trust in carnal things instead of the eternal one. And I wonder why I'm not seeing eternal results. Is because it says, curse is the man who trusts in man when we put our hope in the temporary, it can only ever bring about temporary. And it doesn't matter how good on the surface that temporary may be, it can only ever produce temporary results. And if it's something that's in this world system, which is temporary, it can only ever produce something as good as this world system can produce. Even the best in this world system is nothing compared to our heavenly, who our heavenly Father is. And that's what David said in Psalms, is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not desire the things of this world. I shall not want the things of this world. I shall not seek after the things of this world. I shall not put my hope in the trust, my hope and my trust in the things of this world and in man and the systems and in what man has created. I will not put my hope in the in my trust in that. My the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Why? Because David understood and he knew. What he had in his heavenly father was far more, was far greater than what this world could ever offer. This world, as much as it can muster up, as much as it can put together, it can never truly offer hope. As much as it can put together and as much of this world system can come together and as much as man can become elite and, and smart and, and accomplished, Man can never truly offer hope. Man can truly never offer peace. Man can truly never offer, offer truth and wisdom and life. Why? Because only those things can come from our Heavenly Father. Man can try. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll take things and we'll, we'll take and we think because we're good enough, we'll take them and then we'll try to manipulate them. We'll try to manipulate a system. We'll try to, I mean, just look at everything. Somebody be like, well, I created this out of nothing. No, you just simply manipulated elements that God gave you to use. There was no creating. And so that's what man does. And especially in 
broken man, an unredeemed man, an unrenewed man, even as a born again believer, when we don't have our minds renewed, our system that we're born into is trying to just simply manipulate the things of this world, whether it's a system, whether it's people. And we wonder why we're never ahead and we can never get forward and we can never make it out on the other side. It's simply because we can only manipulate what this world can offer and even the best that this world can offer. Always, 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 always will fall short of who we're designed to be and who we're called to be and how we're called to walk and how we're called to talk and how we're called to live. That's why I could say cursed is the man who trusts in man. Why? Because man can never bring about anything more than something that's simply cursed. That's why we need Jesus. Because he defeated the curse. He took on the curse. He's the one that came and took it on and hung on the tree because he, he knew that we could never go anywhere beyond that. We did not have it in our own strength, in our own mind, in our own power to ever do anything, to ever even get up to that point. And as much as man has tried up until that point, they just failed miserably the whole entire time. That's why a savior needed to come to go the distance, to pay the price, to pay the price that we could never, ever, 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 ever pay. Why? So that there could be a great exchange, his righteousness for our filthy rags, so that we could step out of the slave market that we were birthed into, and we could step into his freedom, and we could step into his life. Another slave can never set a slave free. It doesn't matter how hard we try and what we do, we are all in this slave market. But that's why Jesus needed to come, the perfect man. The one who the enemy thought was caught in that market with no way out, but he was the perfect, spotless, sinless lamb of God and the power of sin had no right to hold him. And so he paid the price, we find freedom and now the moment we say yes to Jesus Christ, we can walk in his freedom. Why? Because the curse has been removed and we've been pulled out from out from the darkness and out of the miry clay and we've been washed clean and made pure and made holy and beautiful and righteous and now we can go on and do exactly what the second half says but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose hope is in the Lord. Why? Because blessing can only ever come from God. Hope can ever only come from God for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river. Oh man, God wants to just see you grow and expand tonight in his goodness and he will not fear when he comes but his leaf will be green. He will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. I believe tonight that's just such a perfect invitation because so many of us, we get to the point to where we feel we're not worthy, we're not righteous and in our own self or not. But through the great exchange, of, again, of his righteousness for our filthy rags that he puts on his robe of righteousness, we can now come worthy to the table. He now invites us in and now we can sit and partake of his goodness in his life and his grandeur and his magnitude. His heart and his design is to see his goodness on display and advertised in our lives. And I believe a big part of that is coming when we come to the table, when we have these communion suppers, we come to the table and just rest in his goodness. We, we take and we eat our fill and we're nourished. And, and man, it just, 
his life source is able to fill us up so it can flow forth from who we are. That's just so beautiful. So when Jesus sat down with his disciples, he knew what was coming and he knew that he was gonna be that curse. And he knew the great exchange that was going to take place. And I think what's beautiful is the greatest thing that we could possibly ever have is salvation. But man, what love that love gave to even now see us fulfilled and walking in his goodness, even in our bodies. When he sat down, he said, this bread, it represents my body, which is broken for you. What did his body go through? It took on hurt, it took on pain, it took on the stripes so that by his stripes we could be healed, healthy and whole. It took on those things. He took the torment and the pain and the the lack of this world, he took it into who he was so that we could walk in fullness, not just on the other side of eternity, but we we could have the opportunity to walk in his wholeness now. And so when he sat down, he said, hey, This is my body. You're gonna see that. You're gonna see what my body is gonna go through so that your body could be made whole. So that you won't have to walk in the curse, but you can walk in blessing and abundance and strength and health and peace. I'm gonna take it on. This is my body, which is broken for you. And he invites us He invites you and me tonight, just like he did with his disciples. Say, take and eat it. Do it in remembrance of me. So many times we fail to remember what Jesus paid for. So therefore we have a nice religious act. It's great, it's wonderful, but we forget the goal of it all. We forget the purpose of it all. We forget the value in it. We forget to remember what Jesus paid for with his life physical body. So I declare health and life and wholeness and abundance and strength in your body tonight. Why? Because that's what Jesus paid for. That's what Jesus paid for. So let's just make a decision tonight to live in what Jesus paid for. So Father, thank you. We receive what Jesus paid for through this broken bread by faith in Jesus' name. And on that same night, he took the cup. And this is so beautiful. Because really, either way, it would have left us with lack. If he would have just provided the cup, it would have just been forgiveness of sin, which is the greatest thing ever that our sin debt is paid because it's something that we can never do. And it's the very thing that bought the opportunity for us to now live in Christ and be in the presence of our heavenly father for all eternity. But I love that he fulfilled both sides of it. He said, I don't want you to have lack anywhere now or for all eternity. So he showed that by pouring out the very thing. His life is in the blood, that's what the Bible says. And he poured out his very life, his abundant life, so that we could walk in every single promise that even when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, we can have a promise that not only did Jesus pay for it now, through his body, but he paid for us to walk in his abundant life for all eternity. And that eternal life could become ours now as we receive what Jesus paid for through his perfect blood. As we receive that now, I believe eternal life becomes ours because our spirit man is resurrected to new life in Christ. 
that in a sense, God's very breath is breathed back into us in resurrection life in our spirit, man. Now the very presence of God is dwelling and living in us. It's so beautiful. But it all came from the blood of Jesus that calls us holy, that calls us righteous, regardless of the lies the enemy tries to tell us, regardless whether it's our physical bodies or our thought processes that the enemy kind comes to steal, kill, and destroy, we have the very promise written in the blood of Jesus tonight that we can rise above all of that, that we don't have to become a victim to that anymore, but we can now walk in his abundant life. Man, what a promise. So every time the enemy throws out a lie, we can just say, I'm covered in the blood. But you remember what you did in your past? Yeah. Actually, I don't because he rewrote my history. But you remember how much of a failure you were and you were never amount to anything? I, I really don't because he has now covered me with his destiny. All I know now is that the blood of Jesus is washing me clean and I'm not going back. Because I got nothing to go back to because he took it and he cast it away and I am now perfect. There's not even a spot that remains. There's nothing that's even a trace of who I used to be, but I am perfect and I am holy. I am righteous. I couldn't go back if I want to because I am covered by the perfect blood of Jesus that washes away all sin and all shame and all guilt and all imperfection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we have all of that and what you paid for tonight. So we remember you. We remember what you paid for. We remember all of that because the lies keep coming in and I'm not gonna remember the lies anymore. I'm gonna remember your blood tonight, Jesus. So Jesus, we truly do this in remembrance of you. We remember what you paid and we will continue to remember and continue to remember and continue to remember as we walk in your abundance and we walk in your life. All through your perfect blood tonight, we receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You're amazing and you love us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for pouring out. And I thank you, Father, that you're gonna continue to give and pour out tonight because you're not done with what you wanna do tonight in and through your people, in and through your beloved. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. The scripture, <clears throat> the scripture tells us that all <clears throat> who live godly lives in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And we've been told time and again, warning us that persecution is coming upon the body of Christ. But there is nowhere that I have read, that I have read, that we can expect persecution to overcome us. It may come against us, but I have not read where we have to receive it, accept it, and allow it to happen and to overtake us. I believe the authority that Jesus Christ has given us, that authority has power over every realm of darkness. No matter how it comes against us, that authority works against every realm of darkness. Do you believe that your children, if they're walking in the kingdom of God, filled with the Spirit, are endeavoring to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ, 
Do you feel that they have to be beaten and bullied and pushed around? No. But they can use the authority of Jesus Christ in them. But the first thing that happens, we resort to the flesh or we resort to fear. Do you believe that a woman needs to submit herself, a a born-again, spirit-filled woman who walks in the authority of Jesus Christ needs to submit herself to the authority or the darkness within an attacker? Absolutely not. So when the scripture tells us that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world, it's speaking of that spirit of antichrist that's working through the world, that's endeavoring to intimidate us and bring us into a place where we are are not effective for the glory of God. And what we need to learn, church, is who we are in Jesus Christ. You say, well, what about Paul? Paul was beheaded. At least that's what church history tells us. That Paul was beheaded. Paul made a decision for me to live as Christ, but to die is even better. To die is gain. I believe that Paul could have used spiritual authority over his attackers. Well, what about John the Baptist? John the Baptist was under the law. He did not have the spiritual authority that you as a Christian, that you have, that I have. Jesus said, all authority give by you over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Now there has been promise. We have an election coming up in less than a week. And there has been promise of destruction and violence. And some of that violence will be directed toward Christians. Of course, if Trump wins the election, that violence will, they will endeavor to release that against Christians, evangelical believers. But I believe that what we need to understand is what the prophet Isaiah said, Isaiah 54, verse 17. But in that coming day, this is the New Living Translation, no weapon, say no weapon, no weapon turned against you will succeed. Is that the word of God or is it not? No weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice, say every voice. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. How many servants of the Lord do we have in here tonight? We have servants of the Lord here tonight. Amen. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that absolutely awesome? Christian, we need to embrace the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. A righteous person may fall seven times, but he will get up. She will get up every, 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 every time. Every time. The authority that we have in Christ Jesus. Young people, old people, real old people like me. We have authority in Jesus Christ. And God promised in Joel chapter 2 that he would pour out his spirit in these days. Pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And whoever would receive it would embrace the power of the spirit of God. Why do I say these things? Well, because 
I want, I took an excerpt out of a, um, out of a book by Brenda Kuhneman, and it's called Daily Decrees for Government and Nation. And this decree is my prayer over you as God's children, as this election continues to draw closer, promising violence if Trump wins. So I'm going to make this declaration, this decree out over you that I've taken from Brenda Kuhneman's book. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> and as I read this declaration and your spirit bears witness with it, please feel free to express an amen or yes, indeed. We declare, we decree that the liars who deceive and mislead the people of this nation shall be exposed for their crooked ways. We prophesy that they shall repent of their deeds that have been crafted in covert darkness to commit harm. We say that that, that which has been done wickedly in secret shall be shouted upon the housetops. That which has been hidden that which has been hidden shall be brought to light. Those who cause the innocent to stumble and fall shall be brought to justice and no longer be able to further their treacherous lies. In Jesus' name, we bind the demons of lying, deceit, fraud, trickery, and hypocrisy in Jesus' name. We command truth to prevail upon our land. We speak that lies perpetrated on the airway shall be exposed. And we loose the spirit of truth. We prophesy that media outlets that are committed to truth shall arise and defy the false. May the people of this nation see through every lying spirit and embrace truthful facts. We say that liars and deceivers shall be exposed in the name of Jesus. We prophesy deliverance, escape, and rescue by the hand of the Lord against every wicked snare. We say deliverance rests upon us upon our families, upon our homes, upon our communities, and we live in peace and safety in the name of the Lord Jesus. Will you give him a praise? Hallelujah. Bless God. Mm. Bless God. Bless God. Now the elders are going to be, they're going to be coming and they're going to stand in agreement with you regardless of whatever your need might be. You may even have an element of fear over this election, but, but God has not given you a spirit of fear, okay? So you stand in faith that God is still on the throne. No matter what happens, Jesus is still Lord to the glory of God. So come expecting believing God to minister to you tonight as the elders come and we continue to worship our God. Amen. Amen.
heard the accusations and I've heard the propaganda. I've heard the lies they whispered to my soul. That I have been forsaken and I'll always be forgotten. No matter what I do, it's not enough. Then I heard a voice as it opened up the heavens, reminding me of who I've always been. I am your beloved, you have bought me with your blood. And change the